My name is Josh Parker. Thank you so very much for stopping by the channel. And if you're new here, welcome. So this is a learning mecca that I'm trying to put together for all of us guitar nerds, especially those that are interested in jazz guitar. Today, I've got a really cool guitar to show you, so let's go check it out. Okay, so the guitar we have in question here is the Strandberg Saline Jazz NX model. This is not a sponsored video. I want to get that out of the way first thing because I just have been interested in reviewing it, one. But also, I don't see very many actual jazz people reviewing it, so I've wanted to put my two cents in. Also, I wanted to wait for this video until I had properly had enough time to road test it. So the actually, the first week I got it, I played it on a festival. I've taught with it, I've played it in concerts, I've played it at home and practiced on it all day, and uh, I've run it through its paces is what I'm trying to say. So I've had it for almost four months now, and this is what I think about it so far. So let's go check out some of the details. Okay, so we're, we're gonna kind of try to break this down into categories. So first, how does it feel? And how does it look? So I can tell you firsthand, it's very, very lightweight. First thing you pick it up, it's very light. So it's maybe five pounds. And because of that, it's very, very comfortable. It's also very compact feeling. So it sits on you very, very well. There's no diving or anything like that. It's balanced very, very well. Um, so because of those two things, it doesn't feel quite like very many other guitars like normal guitars that i've played so it's quite a bit more compact than like for instance a stratocaster would be but then also it's not as heavy as that those kind of guitars or god forbid a les ball or something like that so it's very uh nice to play i'll, I'll just say that because of the weight and the the feel of it the body will start down here uh these bottom cut is really nice so it puts it in a very, very good playing position. It might be a little steep at first for you, but once you get used to that position, it really makes your hand be able to play much easier. Um, this bottom cut here, if you want to have it like a normal guitar, just on your lap, works well as, as designed as well. Um, but for me, I, I like having it up a little bit. Um, there is a really deep belly cut in the back here that is really nice and it makes it sit really comfortably across your body. There's not a cut here. I wish there was a forearm cut here because I think that would make it even more comfortable. But I guess considering it's kind of their uh, version of a Telecaster, they left it flat. Or maybe because of the F hole or something. I'm not entirely sure why. But I wish they put a, a forearm cut there. But again, it's okay. Um, this cutout and the neck joint feel very, very comfortable. It's probably hard to see on the video, but there is a cutout here and then it slopes as it comes down. So getting access up here, sorry, I just bumped the mic. So getting access up here is really, really nice and really easy. All the way up to 24, there is no problem getting up there at all. Um... Not having a headstock is not an issue at all. And these tuners that are down here work really, really well and they're easy to tune. I guess the elephant in the room is how does the Endurneck feel? And 
for me, it's very comfortable. Uh, that was kind of a scary topic at first because I didn't have really any reference to it. It's just something completely different than any other guitar I've ever played. However, I think it's super comfortable and it actually helps your hand where it, with the taper. So it's thicker on the low bass side down here so you can play your chords or just have your thumb over if you want down here really well. And then it tapers to lower as you go higher on the neck. So when you're playing up here, your thumb's in a much better playing position. So it's super comfortable. Uh, the edges of the fretboard are not rounded over. This is one thing for like those vintage Fender guys that really like a rolled fingerboard. This is not rolled. So uh, the frets aren't sharp or anything like that. It's, again, it's comfortable, but it is very, very flat. So I don't know if you could really roll the fretboard with how they designed it and it'd be comfortable. Be an interesting thing to see. Uh, one thing I will say about the Ender neck is I wish that they had rounded over some of these edges a little bit more. Again, it's not a big issue because it's just three flat sides, but I feel like they could have rounded the tapers a little bit. Um, and the neck is slightly chunkier than I expected it to be. I was expecting like Ibanez neck or something. I didn't really know what to expect, but I was expecting it to be a thin like shredder neck. And it's actually pretty chunky and actually comfortable. It fits in your hand really well. Um, the fan frets, since we're on the neck, are very comfortable. So it, again, it kind of follows the taper of your hand. So your hand naturally wants to curve a little bit as you come up. And it, it follows that curve and it's very comfortable to play. Down here on the open string position or the first fret position, it feels like a normal guitar would. But once you get to about the 12th, maybe 13th fret, somewhere in this area in the middle, you start to notice the, the fanning. Uh, the low strings still feel pretty much like a Strat does. However, the high strings are a little bit tight. Uh, or, tighter I guess than the low strings so they're more compact they're closer together so you got to get used to that feeling of the high strings being slightly closer together than the low strings in my experience that's not been an issue uh, again the first week I got it I took it on a festival and played it and didn't really have many issues at all so every now and then I would jump maybe a fret higher than I wanted to be or just slightly higher but it's actually been really, really nice. Uh, it just makes everything playing up here much, much easier because you don't have to torque your wrist over. Uh, but also because of that fan fretting, it's more in tune than any other guitar I've ever had. So that was one thing I noticed like right out of the box when I tuned it up and played a chord and it was very in tune. Whereas some guitars, you'll notice that some chords sound better than others or some areas of the neck are a little more in tune than other necks. This one is really pretty even all the way up it. Down here in the headstock area, or what would be the headstock area, there is a little taper here on the back of the neck just to kind of give you that feel of a stop if you need it. And that's very, very comfortable. Uh, this locking nut, they made it nice, but I feel like they made it too tall. So I wish they had could come up with a way to like recess it a little bit or make it shorter because although it is nice, it is sharp. So when you run into your hand into it, you'll feel it. So at least like either sand the edges over or like these little screws make them not so sharp or just figure out a way to like move the whole thing back a couple millimeters or something. Uh, and I think that would help it, the feel of that anyway, but it's not bad but it could be better. Um, the frets themselves, the zero fret, I have had the issue with what I've seen a lot in the forum where it pings uh, with lighter strings. Anyway, it came with, I believe, nines on it. Maybe tens, but I think they were nines. Um, it pinged then. The strings that I have on it right now are 12 gauge strings with a 18 gauge third string that's unwound so this is an elixir 12 gauge set with 
the third string from an 11 set. Um, this guitar didn't like the, the wound third very much. The, these pickups didn't, for whatever reason. The, the output was weird. So put the, th the unwound third on it, and it's been fine. Uh, but going back to the zero fret, I've not had that issue with the heavier strings on it really at all. So it, it's comfortable and smooth. I don't do a lot of bending anyway, so it's not been the, a big issue to me at all, but uh, just something to watch out for, I guess. Um, but the frets are silky smooth. These are stainless steel frets. They're very nice. Uh, they basically play themselves and everything is super nice. And it's also a 20 inch fretboard, so it's a very flat fretboard. It's not arched very much, which again, I like. I think it makes playing, especially like more complex chords, really easily because you're not having to like push more on the bass strings or the high strings than you are in the middle. So I think it's, again, the, that uh, concept of everything being balanced is translates to that as well. It's very easy to play. Um, the pickups, so we'll move kind of back down here. The pickups and the electronics are really nice. Uh, these are Strandberg's custom MF pickups, I believe is what they call them. Uh, the stock pickups that come with the guitar. Now, I th always thought that these uh, covers were black, but they're actually like a, a almost mirror finish. Uh, it's kind of kind of interesting. It's different than what I thought it was going to be, but I like it. Uh, these pickups sound really good. They're kind of like a PAF output level so they're not super hot but they're not like super weak either um the volume has a really good treble bleed circuit on it and then the tone knob has a really good capacitor on it so you get a wide range of tone from your tone knob and a very very usable volume knob uh, the pots inside i did look inside of it they are cts pots and you have a five-way switch so the switch all the way in position five is your full neck humbucker. Position four is the neck in single coil mode. Then the middle is both humbuckers. Position two is the bridge in single coil mode. And then position one is your bridge in humbucker mode. Um, I do think, one. I want to say one thing about the switch. I think they put it a little too high or... Like if they could figure out a way to like move it a little bit further down here, I think it would be better because when I first got it, it's not so much now that I've gotten used to it, but when I first got it, I would hit that switch all the time and like bump it down to position four without noticing it. And then I would notice my sound got thinner all of a sudden. And it's like, what happened? I bumped the switch. Uh, so that's one thing to watch out for is that switch, at least for me, is a little close to the strings. Um, and then this tailpiece slash bridge, they machined it very well. It's actually very, very nice. It's all what I'm, I don't know exactly what it's made out of, but it, if some kind of metal, I assume aluminum or some kind of lightweight metal, but, um, these tuning wheels are very easy to tune and they hold tune very well. Uh, you put the string in the, inside the little barrel and then it slips out over top of this little screw here and that's your saddle and then you lock it down up here on the nut um, one thing about these saddles I will say is the adjustment height adjustment is a little limited on them because just because of the of the design it has a slot going straight through the middle of the the, the screw or the the little nut, whatever that you want to call it, the saddle piece. Um, and because of that, you can only turn it in 90 degree intervals. So you, you can't fine adjust it. You have to, it's either set here or set here or set 180. Um, but I will say you can get it set up really nicely even with that, but it is a little limited, but for me, it's again, it's not that big an issue. Uh, I do not have strap locks on this. Normally on guitars I would. However, with this uh, strap, 
it works really well without it and it, it's not going to come off or anything like that. Uh, but also because it's so lightweight, it doesn't feel like it's going to slip off or anything like that. Um, then the last thing is the jack. So where this comes in is at a really good position. However, you probably won't be able to see it, but it's angled. So sometimes, uh, let's see if I, there you go. You can kind of see it a little bit. If I put my hand back here. It comes out at an angle. So because of that, if you have a really thick cable, you can kind of feel it poking in your gut every now and then. But again, it's not really not comfortable, but it's still comfortable, but just something to watch out for. And also because of that, you can't use a right angle cable. You have to use a straight cable. So minor inconvenience to some people, I guess. But uh, Finish is a satin polyurethane. And it is very smooth and very nice. It doesn't get sticky or anything like that. And it protects the guitar well like it should. Um, the acoustic resonance, you probably can't hear it very well through the mic, but it, it's fairly loud for a, an electric guitar and it resonates very well. So you can feel it vibrating and uh, even really light notes, you can feel that the neck is connected to the body and it's all working as it's supposed to. So really good with all that. So let's go check out some of the sounds that you can get from it. Okay, so the setup for this demo for our sound is actually really simple. We are in uh, the Line 6 HX Native, and this is the newest update to it. Uh, 3.5, I believe is what it is. Uh, so we're going into the US Double Normal Channel, and these are the settings for that. And then from there, our cab is actually the 1 by 10 princess um, and then you can manipulate all of the speaker stuff now which is really cool uh, I don't know why line 6 hasn't incorporated that sooner anyway we're using the ribbon R121 mic simulation at uh, roughly where the, the cone and the speaker meet at about 4 inches back and then from there we have a dynamic call and stereo uh, just with the mix pulled back to 20% and a dynamic ambience. And again, it's pulled back a little bit. It's not doing a whole lot, uh, but it does give it just a little bit more of a 3D effect from there. Uh, but that's all we're doing. So it's just an amp with a little bit of reverb. And that's it. Okay, so the sounds we're recording with HX Native in uh, Reaper so it's not anything spectacular I don't I have amps that I could mic up but people are sleeping and all that so we're doing the digital route today um, so the guitar itself were uh, the volume is all the way up and tone all the way up and we're on the neck pickup <laughs> All the way up here, you get a very balanced tone. Might get a little woofy on the low E string, but that's normal for guitars anyway. Um, down here. Very, very balanced across all the strings. Um, if we pull the tone knob back about 50%, pull it 
all the way down to zero. So for me, with the tone, I usually set it about 60, maybe 70%. So pull it down just a little bit to kill some of the extreme highs, but not much. So this is about where I would have it set. Then you can also experiment with the volume knob. So with jazz guitars, a lot of the time we'll pull the volume knob back maybe about to seven or eight. So this is the volume knob about three fourths of the way up or about seven to eight. So again, 12 gauge strings, the tone knob is back about 60% and the volume is about seven to eight and on the full neck pickup. So let's put everything back on 10 and go through this pickup switch a little bit. So again, just for reference, the full neck humbucker. Position four, so this is the neck and single coil. position, so both humbuckers. Position two, so this is the bridge in single coil mode. position one, so bridge in full humbucker mode. So this guitar, especially considering it from a jazz perspective, the bridge is actually really useful. So especially if you want to get kind of those Alan Holdsworth, kind of really bright jangly maybe Eric Johnson kind of chords. Even the cluster kind of stuff. It all sounds really good with that. Or you can pull it up to the neck and get your solos. I really like it. I think the pickups sound great. I think it's got a really, really good balance across all the strings. I love the electronics, especially the treble bleed on the volume knob. I think it works really, really well. And the tone knob, again, I usually pull it back just a little bit to kill some of the high end. Uh, or depending on the room and the group, I guess, if I'm playing with a really uh, bass heavy group or playing in a really muddy room, I might turn the volume all the way up. But again, it's situational awareness at that point, but it's very usable. Okay, again, my final thoughts on the instrument. I think it's really, really good. And honestly, I'm surprised they're not more expensive than what they are. I think the electronics in it are great, especially from a jazz perspective. Uh, I think the feel of the instrument itself is really, really good. Um, the quality seems like it's top notch. Um, the only real issues that I've had with it are, again, this nut, this locking nut. I've never really been a fan of locking nuts in general, but I wish that they could just lower it a little bit and it would be so much better. Um, and then right here at the neck joint where the body meets the neck, you can feel that. If you're just rubbing it your finger across like I am, uh, that's a sharp edge. But when you're playing, you, you'll never feel that. So it's not 
not a big issue, but just a little nitpicky thing. Um, and then I wish that they had just put a, a little contour curve right here on this edge because it feels like a Telecaster or something. It's just a really sharp cut there. Um, but again, overall, I love this guitar. So I personally, it's been a uh, really good tool, a very good instrument for me, and it has actually improved my playing a lot because it makes me more conscious of where my thumb is at, for example, and it gets the neck up so I'm more comfortable. I don't have any aches and pains or anything, so I can play longer, and I don't really have very many downsides to say about it. The case that it comes with, the gig bag, is really good. Um, it is packed f tons full of features. It's even got like a little uh, rain coat that you can put over to protect it from the weather. It's really good. Um, there's one concern on the case that I've... It's Again, it's not been an issue, but the straps, when you uh, go to the bottom of the case, they're attached with a magnet and there's like a little hook that it fits into and it's magnetic. I'll show you a video of that. That's concerning to me, but again, I've never had any issues, and it's pretty solid. You have to really pull it out to get it to come apart, but that always makes me a little nervous. Uh, but the case is really good. It protects the guitar really well. It's got a decent amount of padding, and it's light and compact, just like the guitar is. Uh, so if you're in the market for one, I would highly recommend at least going and checking one out if you can, or getting your hands on one and playing it. It doesn't feel like any other guitar I've ever played in my life. Um, and I feel like rating it against a normal guitar is kind of uh, unfair in that way because it, it's not that. Uh, but if you're looking for a really lightweight ergonomic guitar that sustains for a long time and feels great and sounds great and has a really warm jazz tone, check these out. All right, so one one last thought before I go. Uh, this is actually the reason why I haven't posted anything for a while if you've been a subscriber to the channel. I apologize. I am getting back to videos as soon as I can. Uh, however, this August of 2022 of this year, I have become a jazz guitar instructor at Campbellsville University. So I'm an adjunct there right now. And we would be very, very happy to show you around the campus or uh, give you more details on auditions and all that kind of good stuff if you're interested in joining a guitar, jazz guitar program or jazz program in general if you're not a guitarist. Campbellsville is a really small school. It's very homey, very uh, close-knit atmosphere. But everybody there is super friendly and super helpful. And uh, we, again, would be happy to show you around and introduce you to everybody. Uh, so if you're in Kentucky looking for a jazz program, think about Campbellsville a little bit. So thank you very much for your time. My name is Josh Parker again, and I will see you later. Mm -hmm.